Have you ever wondered how organisms grow and function? This question may seem simple, but the answer is a fascinating journey into the world of biology. Let's dive in and explore the concept of growth in living organisms. Imagine a world filled with diverse organisms, from towering trees to tiny insects. Each of these organisms shares a common feature, growth. This is the process by which living things increase in size, height, or quantity over time. Now, consider a seed, a tiny capsule of potential. With the right conditions, a sprinkle of water, a dollop of sunlight and a dash of time, this seed can transform into a full-grown plant. This transformation is nothing short of miraculous, and it's all thanks to the process of growth. But how does this happen? How does a tiny seed become a towering plant? The answer lies in the magic of germination. When a seed is soaked in water and then planted in wet soil, it begins to germinate. This is the first step in the process of growth. Over time, the seed develops into a plant, its stem reaching for the sky, its leaves unfurling in a dance of life. Observing this growth is a fascinating process. Each day, the plant's height can be measured and the nature of its leaves can be observed. Over time, these observations paint a picture of the plant's growth, showcasing how it changes and develops over time. And this process isn't just limited to plants. All living organisms, from the smallest bacteria to the largest whale, experience growth. They develop, change, and increase in size over time. This is a fundamental feature of life, setting living organisms apart from non-living entities. So, you see, Growth is a fascinating and integral part of all living organisms, setting them apart from non-living entities. This process, from the germination of a seed to the development of a plant, is a testament to the magic of life. It's a reminder of the potential that lies within each living organism, waiting to be unlocked and explored. Now, how do these organisms sustain their growth? It's all about nutrition. Nutrition is the process by which organisms satisfy their food requirements. Every living organism, from the smallest bacteria to the largest blue whale, needs nutrition to survive and grow. Let's delve into this fascinating world of nutrition. There are two main categories of organisms when it comes to how they obtain their nutrition, autotrophic and heterotrophic. Autotrophic organisms, like most green plants, are quite self-sufficient. They manufacture their own food through a process known as photosynthesis. They use sunlight, carbon dioxide from the air, and water from the soil to create their food. This process not only feeds the plants, but also releases oxygen into the air, contributing to the balance of gases in our atmosphere. On the other hand, there are heterotrophic organisms which cannot make their own food. Animals fall into this category. Some animals, like cows or deer, depend directly on plants for their food. However, other animals, like lions or tigers, rely on plants indirectly by consuming animals that eat plants. So, whether it's a plant soaking up sunlight or a lion hunting its prey, each organism has its own unique way of obtaining the nutrition it needs to grow and thrive. Thus, nutrition plays a vital role in the survival and functioning of all organisms, whether they produce their own food or rely on others for it. Another intriguing characteristic of organisms is their ability to move. But what does movement really mean in the context of organisms? Well, let's dive into that. Movement is a common feature of living organisms, but it can take many forms. Some animals, for instance, have the ability to move from one place to another. This is called locomotion. Locomotion involves the use of special appendages or body parts, like legs, wings, or fins. So, a cheetah sprinting across the savanna, a fish swimming through the ocean, or a bird soaring in the sky are all examples of locomotion. However, not all organisms can change their location. Coral polyps, for instance, are stationary, anchored to the ocean floor. But that doesn't mean they can't move. They can extend their tentacles to capture food, a different type of movement. And what about plants? Well, they certainly don't go for walks, but they do exhibit movement. Consider the mimosa plant, also known as the touch-me-not. When its leaves are touched, they fold up, a clear example of movement. 
or think about a houseplant on a windowsill. Over time, you might notice it bending towards the sunlight, another subtle form of movement. In conclusion, movement, whether it's from place to place or just a physical change, is yet another feature that distinguishes living organisms from non-living things.